The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Today, we're putting the finishing touches on a pop track. The track that we're using is an ex the track that. The track that I'm going to be finishing up is a project I started in an earlier tutorial and I'll put a link in the description if you'd like to see how I made this entire project from scratch. But today what we're doing is coming back with a set of fresh ears and taking a look at each individual channel and seeing if there's anything that we could do to the MIDI or the plugins or just anything about the idea to make it better. So we're just going to start here at the top with the flute. This is the very first sound that we hear. This sound came out of uh, Whole Loops Hot Tropics 3. We dropped it into a sampler, did a little sound design with OTT. The first thing I notice about this is that high note that happens at the first beat of every measure gets a little bit old. So I think I'm going to make a four measure loop instead of a one measure loop. And let's just grab these and pull these down and see if this makes it a little bit less uh, repetitive. Hey. I like that. A little bit more staccato. I think those shorter notes just bounce more. Before they were all kind of mushed over each other and didn't have didn't have the bounce. And speaking of bounce, I think these are a little bit stiff for the style of music that we're trying to make. So I'm going to pull up the Latin percussion grooves here in Ableton and just see if I can find something groovy. That's groovy. And highlight them all and hit commit. Hey. 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 Let's also make this a little brighter. Hey. That's what I was looking for. The other thing I kind of want to get rid of is the drums in this beginning. In fact, let's just cut the intro in half. Nine. Nine bars is an awful lot of time to get to get to it in a pop track. Let's keep the snap in. And then cut. Yeah. Cool. So I think this has the same problem that our flute had where we, we just hear it too much. And since the idea was new, I didn't really find it to be too much. But again, we came back with fresh ears and decided that it was just too much. So I'm going to cut half of these out. And maybe to fill this gap, because I kind of liked how they filled as like a second layer, I might just keep them hanging around longer with a little bit of echo. And since you already got a delay going, I'm going to rack these up. Call this echo. Got the reverb on full blast. Let's go into our echo and let's do some longer echoes. That's a little bit more vibey. Let's add some wobble to these, and let's also send them to the background by hitting this mid side button. We already got the pan randomizer in here on the sampler going. So it's already getting a little left right action. So this mid side is going to be a perfect option for us. Maybe just a little bit more reverb, too. There we go. I think these are also a little loud. I'm just going to pull them down. Yeah. Let's move down to our bass channel and see what we can do to help this sit better in the mix. Let's try the same thing that we did with our lead and just... Ooh. Get rid of the bass for that part. Let's see what happens here in the drop. I'm going to do a little bit of note bending. Drop this down. Push this up. Subtle, but what would happen if we took the first note out and just let it be the kick? Yeah. 
Now, the other problem I have with this base is it's not quite poking through with distortion. So it's a very easy fix. We could just go down here into the sampler and turn on the shaper. I actually like the... Uh, the sign one just that 33 percent that we added made a big difference let's copy this over since this is our new verse baseline let's also copy our flute around i forgot to do that earlier it's a loop so i'm just gonna hit copy you can paste it here and drag it so we don't lose our original arrangement let's go ahead to our snap <laughs> All right, now this is kind of the same snap every time, and that's a little bit boring. So let's maybe echo every other snap. Since everyone's using snaps, your snap game really has to be on point. So I recommend you do something of some sort to your snaps like this. Hmm. Let's try doing a little bit of wobble to him too. I wasn't originally going to do the dotted eighth note, but kind of sounded cool. Let's try instead of die, let's just try the rest. turn these down a little bit. And this is where it gets fun. Let's have the first one be clean and the second one have our echoes. And then this one be clean. Let's just copy this automation across our snaps channel. Check these out here. Maybe we can turn these down a little bit too. Let's also do our little auto pan trick on the reverb just to help that be moving a little bit too. Let's also try a filter delay on here. We're going to put some flangers on these too. We're really jazzing these snaps up. Let's also try maybe a little OTT going in to all this processing. So now we're down to our baseline channel. This is just a plain serum channel. I think I'm going to add a little bit of volume shaping to it. I think I'm going to do trimming and do it at eighth notes. Sixteenth notes. And then I'm going to automate this up as our buildup goes. That. Let's check out this loop down here. Might be a little heavy on the flanger. I think we're also just gonna have this be a second half thing because there's actually a cool drum groove under here. I'm gonna copy this volume shaper down onto here too. Are your vocals sounding a bit weak sauce? Have you wasted countless nights only to be disappointed by your bland vocal mix? Maybe you're just missing the sauce. Introducing Lead Vocal Sauce, the powerful blend of Ableton effects that will have your raw vocal sounding so saucy you might just never use another plug-in chain again. Lead Vocal Sauce is available now only at wholeloops.com. Let's go down to the next channel. This one is too much. 
Let's try doing a little compression on this too. Let's move on down to our next channel. We got a drum fill right here. Let's make one big clip out of these. We're gonna do a little pitch bending in this. I'm gonna use the forwards only on the beat slicer. For doing drums, you really can't beat it. Let's do, instead of volume, transpose. And hit the letter B to get rid of that annoying pencil thing. And let's do an octave and see if we like it. <laughs> Let's keep those the same. I'm going to copy and paste this over to here. Drag a drum fill over this too. Maybe just the first half. Do a little echo automation with this too. And let's just automate the volume on this guy. Bring it down as the build up goes. That way it starts with a lot of echo and ends with none. Let's also turn our wobbles up. Gotta love these, man. Let's move on to our kick channel. This kick is missing some attacks, so I'm gonna pull up a favorite of mine. The uh, transient designer from UAD is just my jam. Hey. I love it. And let's go down to our stomp. Yeah, it's the next one down. Let's solo our stomp and our kick. I think we can do a better job separating them just by just taking them off a little bit. I feel like they're at the same time. The stomp is also a little bit dry. I think a little bit of a reverb is going to help this thing. Let's just rack it up and do it so we can adjust the volume of it. It's K time. Let's do the high quality. Let's turn the stereo up too on this. I like that. Adding a nice uh, kind of mid range knock to the whole thing. Now these stomps are really supposed to be a background sort of element for the kick. So I just went and turned them down about 10 and I might go into the filter on here and low cut them just to get them out of the way of the kick and the sub. Cause we're really in this for the crunch. a little pan randomization on this stomp just to really make sure that this thing was in the background and not interfering with the kick. Let's check out our rim.
I even low cut this a little bit too. I took some of the attack off. Resonance really helps you find where to low cut things. And when you low cut things, they just sit so much better together. I'm gonna hit the pan randomizer on here and this is gonna have them uh, kind of hit in different pan positions. I think that's gonna help it bounce around the outside a little bit more. I'm gonna turn this back up and I'm gonna use this to turn it down in our beginning part because I want it to be loud in the other part and quiet in this part. Perfect. Let's move down to the percussion loop below it. Looks like we made an impulse with some instruments in it. I might just add a couple more one shots in here just to spruce this thing up. I feel like the pattern could use just a little bit more fancy stuff in there. So let's just double click it, get out of envelope mode. So, you know, I might layer this with this. Yeah. Pitch it down a little shorter on the stretch too. That's what I love about impulse. This stretch thing is so useful. And you get your uh and randomization on here. Let's see what else we can. This is nice. Let's put this thing in here. Let's layer it with our. Cool. We're just going to turn this down. Maybe a little soft, soft attack on there. I wonder if we uh, compress these a bit, if they'll sound better. They usually do. Yeah. Maybe do more on the... Uh... Much better. really brings out a lot of the uh, kind of crunchy nuance of these whole loop samples, and that's exactly what I was going for. This looks like an empty channel. Let's delete this. Let's do a little panning automation on this. I want this to start left and kind of end right. Hey. Let's do the same thing with this, but more of a zigzag. Let's also cut the drums out for this last beat. Boom. I think I'm going to uh, clip this a little bit. If you check out my last video, I did a more in-depth demonstration of this uh, clipper, but man, it sounds really great. Let's turn this down a little bit. And let's also change the transient to forwards only. I want to shorten it a little bit too. A little tighter drum roll. Man, this beats forwards only on the transient is your loop shaping sauce because we changed this way those snares sounded in a major way versus this. Now that sounds like a tight drum fill. Let's move on down to our next channel. It's called MIDI. I'm not even sure what this is going to be. Oh, some closed hats. Let's do a low cut filter on these hats. Hey. Let's also do one voice. Little 
softer on the attack. And a little softer on the volume. That's where our drum fills at. Same thing with this one. And let's check out our open hi hats now. Hey. Let's do the same thing. Seems a little bit dull. And we're just gonna add some resonance in the spot where we do want it. on the delays so we're just gonna do this in a group I want to flan them let's turn these back down Check out our down effects. All right, I might drop an EU3 on this thing. Let's do a little bit more tone shaping on this. I feel like that's more like it. And I'm actually gonna borrow this audio effect rack to make this thing hang out a little bit longer too. We just changed this sound to that sound. Let's check our next channel down. A little volume shaper on this for sure. Seemed a little bit motionless. Let's do a quarter note on this one. I actually like the full blast sidechain on these. Let's see if this one needs it. Maybe this one does too. Let's copy it down. Nothing's more boring than a plain ass riser that doesn't pulsate or do something different. Much better. We've got a little breath thing. I'm gonna take some of the bass out of this and I think that'll help it cut through better. EQ3 is great for that. I swear, people don't show EQ3 enough love. I might move it off the downbeat and put it right here instead. There we go. Now it has its own little place. We don't have to run it so loud. The final channel we have is another little vocal shout. It's feeling a little bit dry to me. Let's start with a reverb and see if we can make this a little cooler. Uh, dry signal and put it in the left ear and the reverb and put it in the other ear. That's cool. Maybe it's 
too extreme, we'll do halfway instead of hard left and right. There we go. And since we have our reverb and dry signal getting panned, we're going to put a delay right in the center. I'm going to use the filter delay for that. We can turn off our outside delays. Let's try this one. Boom. Hey. Little chorus. Maybe a little filter. Now the final thing I want to do to spruce this up is glue all this together and my favorite mix glue is a distressor and you don't need the UAD one that I'm going to use. Tons of people make distressor emulations and none of them are bad. So I'm going to take every single channel except for my sub bass and send it to the distressor. So let's go find our, here it is, and I might have this one just maybe like minus 15. This is a sub two, so not really trying to compress that that hard. But here in our distressor, we're just going to go full blast, full blast, and then pull this way down. And maybe uh, don't want to do full, so we're just going to do a little bit more headroom. There we go. I like to keep it right up against the wall. Hey. That's without it. And back on. Let's cut our sub out right there too. Now the final thing that we're going to do is down here on the master channel. The last thing I want to do is a little bit of compression on the master. And my favorite compressor for mastering is the API 2500. I like to use it at half on the mix. Slow attack, low ratio, and a very fast release. And we'll hit the threshold a little bit. I find that the old sounds a lot better than the uh, new type on here. And then we're going to finish this off with the Precision Maximizer by UAD. I'm going to turn the limiter on. Well, there you have it. That is my finishing touches on a pop track. I hope you found the tips and tricks in this tutorial useful. And if you have any questions on how to finish your pop tracks and your club bangers, leave it in a comment below. And I'll catch you guys next time with another tutorial. Peace out.